morning, everybody. Joel with Catfish Combat here, and welcome back to another episode. So uh, it's a beautiful early November morning outside today. Just dropped the kids off at school, and I'm going to do some catfishing. So it's also November 10th, which everybody knows November 10th is a Marine Corps birthday. So Raya Kill to my fellow Tufel brethren. Just want to give a shout out to you guys. Thank you for your service, past, present, future. And yeah, so today uh, weather conditions are a little bit different than last time. So weather is going to be um, a little bit warmer. High is going to be in the low to mid 70s today. Uh, it's going to be sunny out as well. So last time it was colder, it was like you know mid 50s. We had some wind going and it was cloudy and overcast. So my strategy going out today is going to be that I'm going to start a little bit deeper. Uh, we've also got a little bit higher atmospheric pressure today. So again, and I'll explain a little bit more about how that works later in the day about how uh, atmospheric pressure, also called barometric pressure, affects the fish and what depth they're going to sit at. So I'm going to start a little bit deeper. Uh, I'm going to work an area I haven't fished in a little bit, um, but I know that it's got some got some good uh, good current breaks and some deeper water. So, all right, we're going to get after it. All right, so here we are in the Tennessee River uh, in northern Alabama, also called Wheeler Lake. I fish mainly the river section. Uh, so yeah, so I just got a bunch of shad. Moving out to the main river here. I spent about an hour in a marina. I got about two dozen shad. I got a couple of skipjacks. We're gonna use a variety of baits today, see what that can get us. Um, so yeah, so where I'm gonna start, I'm gonna look for edges at about 25, anywhere from 20 to 30 feet right now. Um, there's a couple of turns in the river. That's where I'm gonna start, and then I'm gonna work my way back from there. If I don't find them in that water, I'm going to uh, move deeper, see if they're in some of the deeper holes. So that's the plan going today. Remember, don't ever fall in love with the plan. Adjust your plan as the fight progresses. All right, let's see if we can get some. Guys, so if you guys can see my sonar right there. All right, so you can see that is a stack of catfish right there on the bottom. So my guess was right, they're in about 30 feet and there's a lot of them down there. Those are some good sized fish. Okay, so what we're gonna do, uh, or how I found this spot, if you look up here, you can see there's a turn in the river and where that turn is <clears throat> starts actually in this direction so you can see by sonar there's more there's some large fish signatures near the bottom here there's some big cats so what makes this spot significant there's where the turn is there's my dog what makes this spot significant is you can see the turn in the river there right now you can also see that there's a current seam here also look at the depth change. So right there's the shore, it's really close, but I'm in 30, about 31 feet of water right here. So there's a steep drop on a current seam in a warm day where the atmospheric pressure is pretty high. So that tells me the fish are gonna be deeper. Now I cross this zone right here in this area, my sonar just absolutely lit up. I mean, there's, fit, there's bait fish here. I can tell there's probably white bass feeding. I saw a bunch of splashes out there. And then I look on my sonar and underneath them, See, see them, some large signatures right there. Those are some catfish. They're, they're not exactly on the bottom. Looks like they're a couple feet off. They're suspended. So we're definitely in the right spot. Now, what I've learned is that don't just throw in the same spots you always go to, right? Go in and have a plan. Check those spots first. Trust your sonar. Your sonar is going to tell you a lot about what's going on under there. It's going to tell you uh, about what's going on underneath the water, underneath your boat, and show you what you need to see, right? Um, that's the indicator you should be where you should start where you should be throwing it. If you don't see anything It's probably not a good sign that the fish are there, right? If you see activity, especially white bass skipjack feeding That is a really really good sign because often the catfish will zero in on that and they'll get underneath that school of feeding white bass or skipjack and they'll feed on injured wounded shad that are falling to the bottom and sometimes the fish miss So yeah, we definitely find the right spot. So we're gonna throw some lines in guys So I'm gonna go over a little bit of the equipment check here. Okay, all right, so what I showed you guys uh, last time that I had, I had the uh, H2O Express reel, right? Well, that one died, and you know, I took it apart, found that about a third of the gears had been sheared off, so I was making that clicking sound. So I replaced it with this Daiwa BG5000, uh, so we're going to give that a go today. I still have another H2O Express reel. You guys probably replace it with the same one. Uh, all three of, I got three rods here that are Whisker Seeker, uh, Chad Ferguson series rods. You can buy those online. Uh, these are the medium heavies. I like them because they got a nice limber tip. 
very, very sensitive for picking up bites. They got a lot of backbone. You can easily handle 20, 30, 40, 50 pound fish with these. Um, I've done it, not, not a big deal, right? The line I'm using is uh, Berkeley Big Game, 40 pound mono. This is the Solar Collector. It's basically high-vis line. You definitely wanna use high-vis line when you're catfishing. Uh, it helps you see where your line at is line is at in the water, but more importantly, it helps you uh, deconflict tangles. Because when you're throwing rods, a lot of rods out, and uh, there's current, it's pulling your lines all over the place. You wanna be able to see where they're going so you make sure you don't get a massive, massive tangle. All right, so it comes down here and I have this slider rigged here. And again, I have a, uh, I use the slider, but instead of, you know, just attaching a weight straight to the slider, I use a paper clip and I twist it, right? I showed you guys that in the last video. That's a great trick to use for um, if you if this weight gets stuck, especially if you're fishing the dam, rock piles, things like that, this gets stuck and you start pulling on this line, this line's really strong, it's not gonna break, right? But this will start to come undone, you'll lose your weight, but you won't lose your entire rig. These are very easy to replace. Also, this is a no roll sinker. Normally those go through your line. What I've done here is I've attached a piece of 20 pound mono, just wrapped it around, and look, it acts exactly like a disc sinker. No issues, right? Use a bead here to protect your knot from the shock of when this lands and hits the water. Large swivel, 80 pound Berkeley big game mono leader. Now, down here I've got a demon dragon, right? And I'll explain that in a second. But beyond the deep demon dragon, I got about a, this is anywhere from an 18 to 20 inch leader. Um, and then it's also 80 pound uh, Berkeley big game mono here. And there's a size eight Gamagatu octopus circle hook down here, okay? Now the demon dragons. The Demon Dragons, I started adding these uh, in the summertime. And uh, to tell you the truth, I really don't know if these actually catch more fish, but two advantages to it, right? One, it gives a little bit of noise, especially in the current. It gives that little rattle. Can help catfish zero in on it. The other thing I like about this is this essentially turns it into a Santee Cooper rig. So what that means is that when this weight is on the bottom, this actually floats. This floats the bait off the bottom. So as in the current, it's moving like this instead of just sitting on the bottom. Now, I have only lost one rig since I started using these. They keep it off the bottom and I hook up on trees and rocks a lot less. So that's the other advantage of it. All right, so let's get out there and uh, let's, throw some, let's throw some lines, see if we can get some catfish. Number one, I'm gonna throw a whole thread fin shad out there on one. I'm gonna throw about half a, or a shad head on one skipjack head on the other and a skipjack body section on the other as well we're again we're going to throw a, mat, a smattering of baits out there see what they want let the fish tell me what they want all right let's get them out there all right guys so i got my four lines out on this one i've got a whole thread fed shad on this one i've got a shad head one of the big shads i had this one's a skipjack body piece about yay big and then this one's a skipjack head so yeah we'll uh we'll give it a go here and See what happens. Got him. Yep. Got a fish. Feels like a blue cat. That was right off the back of the boat. He's not real big. Yeah, he came up and aggressively grabbed that thing. It was on a chunk of skipjack. Probably an eater size blue. We got here a channel. Yeah, we got a channel, decent sized channel. These are kind of the fun, more fun sized channels to catch. It's nice and fat. Yeah, we'll take it. Tell you, little, little brothers, quit eating my bait. All right, later, dude. All right, not a bad fish. Let's get another one. All right, so after that channel cat, uh, I gave that spot about 45 minutes. Wasn't picking up a whole lot other than some lethargic nibbles. So what I think is going on, there's a lot of gar over there. Whatever I've seen on there is probably some gar and bait fish, uh, not a lot of active catfish. So I moved up about 200 meters from the original position. So I moved up river. And uh, I dropped this line down first, right under the boat, and within 30 seconds, something pulled a, a thread fin shad right off that thing. So I'm on top of a hole. I'm in about 40 feet now. Um, and you can see there's a lot more current in this zone right here. So I think that the catfish might pull a little bit further forward and might be a little bit deeper today. 
Um, the reason for a lot of that, if you do some research, uh, looking at how atmospheric pressure uh, pressure affects fish, right? So it's measured in barometric pressure. So when you get a higher barometric pressure, the barometer's reading, you know, 30.21, 30.23, that's pretty high. So that's air pressure on the fish. They actually feel that in their swim bladder. The larger the fish, the more they feel it. So when you have high pressure like that on a day like today where it's really clear, sunny, it tends to drive the fish into deeper water. So that's why I kind of started about 20 to 25. I wasn't getting what I wanted. I wasn't seeing what I wanted. So then I moved into 40 feet. I picked up a lot more signatures closer to the bottom. So I think the catfish are probably on these little current seams here. They're, they're probably in the holes. So that's where I'm going to focus the rest of my efforts today is on holes and deeper water around 40 feet. Yeah, that rod three is definitely getting hit here. Let's see if he takes it. Something's chewing on it. Yeah. yeah, I think he's got it. Yeah, I got him. Not real big. Definitely got him though. Probably channel cat. What in the world? Well, I think this is a first. I think the bass fishermen are going to be mad at me with their little tournament going on here this week. <laughs> That's a big spotted bass, man. <laughs> that is bizarre. Never had that happen before. Sitting on the bottom in 40 feet of water on a catfish rig. And he ate a shad head. That's funny, man. All right. <laughs> I might have a fish here. Yep. Got him. Got him. I think he's real big. Yeah, he's a little guy. Let's see what he is. Probably channel cat. This thing has been pecking on this line for the past 30 minutes. I'm sure it's the same fish. So I'm in some deep water. I'm in about 40, that's in about a 45 foot hole. Let's see what we got here. It's about to hit the surface down there. There he is. Let's see what we got. And we got ourselves a pesky channel cat. Yep. All right. Yep. It's a decent size. It's a fun size channel, but yeah. Not what I'm really after today, but it'll do. Pretty. All righty. Oh, I got a nice fish. I think this thing's got some mass to it. Let's see, pull me into a rock. Pull me into a rock. I think he did. Okay, so I think I got a fish here. So I pulled, I got stuck. I pulled this fish out. Yeah, I think I got a flathead on here. I, he buried me in a tree. I pulled him out. I thought I was just done for. I thought I was stuck and now I'm pulling something up that's moving. I think it's a flathead. I thought he got off. Well, that was unexpected. I think he buried, oh yeah, that's a nice blue. That's not a flatty, that's a nice blue. Get 
get him some drag. Yeah, that's not a small fish, man. Yeah, that's a good fish. He has gotten very little energy though. He's fighting like a flathead. Fish have been really lethargic today. Here, let's get him. Let's get him netted. Come here, dude. Uh, yeah. That's a that's a big fish. It's a nice one. Nice blue, got him on that shad head. Yeah, it's been hours since I've gotten a fish. So yeah, they're starting to the bite's starting to pick up here. It's that golden hour before sundown. I need the pliers for him, he's deep. All right, buddy. We're gonna get this hook out of you. I'm gonna put you on the board. What's your whisker there, man? I don't want to tear it. All right, let's get that out of the way. This is probably at least 15 pounds. He's not huge, but he's a good fish. I'll take it. All right, so he's clocking in at 36. Yep, 36 on the dot. All right, let's get some weight on him. Place the batteries on my scale. Should be working today. My guess is he's at least 20. Let's see what we got here. Twenty, twenty-one pounds. Good fish right there, man. I'll take it. He's just bleeding from his lip. He's not got hooked or anything. All right, I'll let him go. Pretty fish. That's a good one. All right, let go, dude. All right, now you're just biting. Let go. Let go, man. If you open your mouth, feel free. There we go. All right. Good fish. All right, guys. So we're gonna talk about what's been going on today. So. Yeah, it's been a strange day. Um, with the with the weather change, with it being warm, these fish are acting like it's a summer, like basically a summer pattern right now. Um, so I've set up and I started about 20 feet. I didn't get anything. I went all the way down to 40 feet in some of these holes. And that's where I was getting small channel cats and a lot of nibbles and stuff on my skipjack. Um, so what that tells me is that the fish were reacting as though it was summer, going for deeper water. I'm just watching my rods. Uh, so they were going for deeper water and um, yeah, they weren't, they were very lethargic, not very active. So I tried to soak my baits for a long time. Uh, normally in the winter and fall, I tend to move around a little bit more because um, the fish aren't moving around as more. They're more schooled up when the weather gets colder. They kind of stay in one area for a while unless they're feeding early in the morning or the evening. Um, so I was trying to find those spots, but uh, yeah, they were... They were scattered, not really schooling up. I was kind of getting individual fish here and there. Um, so got a couple of channel cats. Now, rolled around about four o'clock and the sun started to go down. I went to my last spot. I tried three different spots, three different holes. I'm on my last spot right now. And it's a turn in the river right here. It's kind of close to where I started. It's about 300 meters from where I started. But it's at the very beginning of the turn. There's a 40 foot hole right here. And I saw a lot of activity. I saw some rocks. Um, uh, on the sonar so i decided to give it a try here i also switched over entirely to shad and then what happened on my my number one rod it went down like a you know pretty aggressive strike and i you know went down and reel reel down on it and i got the fish and then nothing it was stuck so i figured the fish ran me in with snag so i grabbed the line i pulled and pulled and pulled this is all off camera i was pulling pulling i broke it free and then I started to reel and there was a fish there. It was a 20 pound, 21 pound blue cat. Um, so yeah, so I think the key today was definitely a huge adaptation of the plan. Everything went completely different than what I thought it was gonna be. Um, I, I'm fishing again, more on that, that summer evening pattern where I'm sitting in one spot on a curve. I'm just gonna let my bait soak here until a little bit past dark and see what we can do. And uh, yeah, I think that that'll probably produce maybe one more fish before I gotta head in. So we got rod three getting hit here.
There it goes. Someone's chewing on it. Yeah, I got him. Good fish. Yeah, that's a good fish. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> he's pulling a little bit hard at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, he's probably not that big. Yeah, he's about to hit the surface here. I think it's a flathead. Yeah, it's a flatty. Not a super big one, but I'll, I'll take him. Oh, he's a little guy. Yeah. Now he woke up. I was dragging him across the surface there. It took him a second. Got him right through the side of the lip there. Pretty fish. He little. About an eater size flathead, but I don't eat these guys. Pretty color. One of the things I like about flatheads is they all have different colors. This one, yeah, it's like a medium brown. Some are darker, some are lighter. Real pretty fish. All right, buddy, go get bigger. All right, well, that's four. What you doing? What you doing? Some, some love? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you like fishing, Ginger? Yeah. Yes, we like to fish. We'll be on the boat. This is my dog, Ginger. She's our golden doodle. She likes to fish with me sometimes. Good doggy. All right, so that's going to be it for today's episode of Catfish Combat. Man, tough day of fishing. Skunk monster was all over me, but uh, I had to fight him off and ended up prevailing. I ended up catching some fish. So, uh, yeah, big lessons taken from today, right? So, on seasonably warm day, weather shifted quite a bit from last week. Fish were lethargic, they were deep, not moving around a whole lot. So I had to adjust my plan a lot and go back to basically summertime fishing, which is find a deep hole, throw your baits and let them soak for a while. Um, didn't get any instant bites, not a lot of schooled fish. A lot of them were very, very spread out uh, and individual. And uh, yeah, not, not great quality fish except for that one. So got five fish, including that bass. Hey man, that's still better than sitting in the office, right? Go fishing on the days that you can. You can't always pick them. Today is my only day off, right? So you got to adjust. And what I want to prove today is that even on days where it's really, really tough, you can still catch fish. You just got to think outside the box. What you plan, what you originally planned isn't working, adjust your plan. If that doesn't work, keep adjusting until you find what works. You will find fish that bite eventually. If you keep at it, you keep trying, and you keep changing it up and seeing what works for you, okay? So tomorrow's Veterans Day. I want to give a big shout out to all active duty reserve National Guard. Thank you for your service. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if you like what you see, if you like this episode, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. Leave me a comment, uh, anything you want to know or anything you'd like to see differently in the future. And uh, yeah, I think I pooped out my dog here, so I'm going to take her home. Yeah, she's, she's done for the night. All right, that's it for tonight. Thank you and take care.